Your Excellency the President and the Deputy President, our family and friends, good afternoon. You've been sitting there not talk, saying a word, but I'd give you an opportunity at least to open your mouth and say good afternoon. I'm here to mourn or to say something about my firstborn child, Fidel Castro Udiambo Macarios Odinga. As a mother can tell you, the happiest day of my life was the day I gave birth to Fidel at Mata Misericordia Hostel on that second day of November 1973. When the baby was born, I held the baby in my hand and can tell you that's the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. I knew he was going to be tall because he was this long. He was the longest child, baby, that was born that was in the nursery at that particular time. He looked very, very nice. And the looks are still there. You can see that smile. As a growing child, I thought Fidel was being spoiled by the father. I'm a teacher. I was a teacher, the father is an engineer. But I felt that as a teacher, I had to bring up my child in a certain way. The father being an engineer also had his own ideas. I knew I had to instill discipline and teach him the right values in life. But the father wanted to make him an engineer. And I remember when Fidel was about three years old, they went alone, the two of them, to buy toys for Fidel. And the father he came back with three large cartons of toys. I could not believe it. And all these toys were electrical train. All of them were trained moving around in stations and so forth. And I said, why this? And he told me, because I want the boy to be an engineer. It never happened. <laughs> Fidel is, had his own ideas. Fidel was a very loving child. As the sibling has said, he was loving to all our relatives and particularly very protective, even to me. I remember one time, Fidel, because he was growing tall very fast, at the age of 15, 13, Fidel was already approaching five feet, seven inches. And he thought that strength goes with age. And therefore, at that age, he developed love for football. I know they've talked about football here. And his best team, as usual, was Gorma here. I used to be a very worried mother whenever Saturday and Sunday came and Gorma here were playing in this city. Because whatever I do, Fidel will hide and sneak and go to the National, uh, Nyayo National Stadium to watch Gorma here playing. I remember one particular time, Gorma here was playing against AFC Leopard. And you know what that means, those of you who are familiar with the games in this country. And of course, as usual, the war broke out. By seven o'clock, I had not seen my child. Eight o'clock, I had no idea where he was. 
And we were told that some people were injured, some who had even died and at the city mutual. I didn't know whether to start looking for him at Kenyatta National Hostel or at the city mochari. But fortunately, he managed to walk to my sister's house and my sister called me and said, your son is here. It was a relief. So Fidel and football is something that is carried out. Just as I say that I had my ideas of teaching good values. I'm going faster because I also want to give a chance to other to say something. When Fidel was a, reached 18 years old and he said, Mom, now I'm the age of majority. I'm 18 years old and I want to go to a nightclub. I had a shock and I told Fidel, looked around and said, yes. I'll allow you to go. But who are you going with? I said, I'll look for somebody who goes to nightclubs to take you along with him. <laughs> and he said he had his friends. And I gave him two advice, pieces of advice. The first one, I gave him money. And I told him, if you want to drink soda in the nightclub, here's the money buy your own soda. Don't depend on somebody else to do it for you. The second advice was that you are going to meet young girls in that place. Remember, girls are not toys to play with. <laughs> Respect them. You've got to respect them for being there. Those are the things that I taught my child. Fidel, as I said, loved me. He loved his father. Amongst all the four of them, Fidel's the only one who calls me mommy up to the time when he's when he left us. The rest called me mom. And mom to me sounds like I need to pay attention. <laughs> but Fidel said, mommy, then that means nice. I hear, I know that something nice is going to follow. Fidel has left a young family. At the age of 41, Fidel has passed on. My own father died at the age of 41. What a coincidence. And when my father died, I thought that was the end of the, our life, but we are here. So Luam, my daughter-in-law, you can make it, and you will make it. The short time that you lived with Fidel, you've learned a lot of things from Fidel. You know Fidel's likings and dislikings. And some of the things that Fidel loved, these are the things that you are going to instill in your little boy, Alai Raila Udinga. Before I finish, I want to thank all the friends and relatives who have been with us during this particular time. In this modern time, news spread very far and very fast. 30 minutes after Fidel had passed on, I got a call from Australia and somebody was saying, Pole. I got a call from Canada. I got a call from many other friends. I know many friends have been come home to be with us. Many have sent messages of condolences, through letters, telephones, SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, and all the means that they can use. I've received them all, and thank you very much for them.
The darkest day of my life was the day that 4th January 19, uh, 4th January 2015. That's the day Fidel passed on. But Fidel has not left us without memories or without. He has not left us. He has left us with a beautiful wife. That is our daughter. We are going to look after you. We are going to love you. And you are Udinga. And that's what you remain. Fidel has left us with a beautiful young boy called Alai Raila Odinga, which is a, just a duplicate of Fidel, except for the color, which he inherited from the mother. So we thank God that we have part of Fidel remaining on this earth, and that's the part we are going to nature.